Hi there guys, my name is Samuel and today I shall be doing my review on Lego Ninjago Season 13 Master of the Mountain which is a sequel part 2 to what I originally did on Tuesday where I said, where I, well yeah I said about my opinion, I thought it was a great season and all of that but I didn't, that was like the obviously no spoiler version but now even more time has gone past so I'm not, I, I know that most probably not everyone's seen it therefore that's why I wanted to split it up into two so then there would be no accidental spoilers and stuff which I hope I didn't say anything in that video, I don't believe I did so what I will be doing guys i'm going to start off by going through all the characters saying what i thought about them all all the new ones then after that i'm going to talk about the main story plots the locations and then i'm going to kind of round it off with my overall thoughts and what do i think and is there any references um hint hint episode seven to potentially season 14 well to andreas i believe he has already confirmed about season 14 having something to do with episode seven so without further ado let's get on with this video so starting off with the ninja as a whole themselves, really we didn't see too much, it was mainly the beginning, I believe it was three or four, well mainly three episodes and then a few of the later ones because it, it was mainly focused on, you had Kai and Zayn went to the, when they had to escape, they went to the Geckles and you had Lloyd, uh, Nia and Jay went to the months so then they were split up and then cole was kind of on his own making his own crew which as jay said yep cole had his own crew which is really cool and then Wu was kind of with vanya and then they all kind of like split up um well they were split up as well and then they went with cole so i think as a whole we didn't see too much of the ninja but what we did see it was great they weren't arguing or anything like there's some of that in season three the yeah i think they did it really well it was great to see um all of them together and yeah i think that worked really well so focusing in on Zane, to be honest, he didn't do too much this season. He also, he had his humour back, you know, where he's kind of just doesn't understand basic things, which is really funny. And it was especially funny when Kai gets elected chance and they have, they throw the stones as their tradition. And every time Kai makes a decision, the, like the um, geckles, they stopped and Zane would just keep throwing that stone. And it was really comedic because sometimes there'll be a scene and you can't even know where does he get this stone. And he just, throw, it's just quite funny to be honest. And then Kai is just like to ask, keeps asking him to stop it, and he just keeps doing it, which I found kind of funny. But yeah, that's kind of what Zayn did this season. He didn't do too much, but overall, I think it was still great to see him. I think we do need a proper Zayn season because yeah, I you could argue that we've had a couple, but really they've always been looking for Zayn. We've only had one proper Zayn season being rebooted. Season four was looking for Zayn, and he didn't have much screen time in season five. No, sorry, season eleven, part two, the Ice Chapter. That weren't Zayn. It was like he was brainwashed. He was. He got memory wiped. Therefore, it weren't really Zane, which is really ironic. Again, that I've literally just realised it is. It's like finding Zane. It's not like finding Dory. Finding Zane is like the new thing. But yeah, I think Zane did good. And also Pixel. Yeah, they basically just got rid of her again. I don't understand that. Why can Pixel not just join the Ninja on like as like a team? It's like. The situation with Skylar, but worse, like a character that makes sense to be on the team, but they're like no, which I I don't get that and um. Yeah, we didn't really have anything special between Zayn and Pixel this season. But yeah, I think it, uh, Zayn was a great character this season. Then quickly moving on to Kai, he was then elected the new Chancellor of the Geckles from G Gulch. I believe, yeah, that is how you pronounce his name. And yeah, he didn't really explain why it was, well, Zayn, even Zayn did kind of more of the heavy lifting in the fire against the Mino creature, but still the team effort. Yeah, Kai kind of got elected the new Elite after Gulch. And yeah, I thought he leaded well. He did, he, he had a few, well, quite a lot of great moments, really, like convincing them that they should go for the peace route again. And like the whole part of him, like, with all the stones, I thought that was funny. That was like his first act, I believe. He said, like, to get rid of that and then, like, to agree to that, they had to get, like, throw it. That was really funny. But yeah, I think, again, Kai didn't do too much. And it's good to see him being, because I know now this is something I've definitely agreed with Kai being more himself. Because what I think I still bothers quite a lot of fans is that the fact. He, he he always like said he would protect Lloyd, and then when we get to I believe yeah season that is it sorry season eight I always get a bit mixed up because I like because Skybound technically doesn't happen I always like, jump a season before but then because in season eight like when Lloyd nearly gets killed by Lord Garmadon Kai like they have to potentially sacrifice their power and Kai is the only one who's like uh hello we need these which was so out of character for him but yeah I think that they fixed that he was willing to help the ninja and yeah i think he did great so kai great character in this season indeed 
Moving on to Nia, aka Kai's sister, as you most probably already know that. She basically got elected the new Queen of the Months due to Queen Martessa, who was the original Queen of the Months because she was like, Merck introduced her. It kind of happened that she kind of had a crush on Jay. When she saw Jay, she really liked him and she she really wanted Jay and they had to fight for his love, which is really funny because it was always like, in the earlier seasons, it was always like, Jay fighting for like Nia's love. Like, not fighting, but he was always kind of like, like, trying to like prove why he's like good enough for her and then you have this season it's kind of completely reversed where you've then got Nia who's just like getting in the middle she's like no he's like mine and then that was a great the fight I thought was quite funny the way that Nia's trying to like um, fight and then she obviously wins with Spinjitsu but then the part that I find quite funny is when Queen Martessa just starts doing roly polies like why it's really fast and it doesn't make sense it was like I was watching that and I was like what is going on here like, like, why did these randomly start happening? So that was really funny to watch. And yeah, overall, I think it, uh, Nia did really good as um, Queen taking over of Martessa. And it was also great, kind of like Kai, and I've heard other people say, because I do kind of watch our reviews and stuff. Yeah, I totally agree that the fact they didn't, it's good that they didn't overtake control. So Martessa still had a voice to say, but it was just Nia was like the new Queen for the time being. So yeah, I think Nia did great in there. And yeah, pretty awesome. Then linking on from Nia, we have Jay, who I thought he was great this season. Thankfully, they fixed the comedy issue because you know that I, well, I think I've heard this as well. And I know that what it was that Jay's comedy was more played as him ha like being a complete goofball that had no clue what was going on. Where this season, they kind of brought it back to how he should be, where he's goofy, but he, he still knows what's going on. He's more to cheer everyone up and he's trying to be like the comedy, like the comedic character, which I think works really well. And yeah, I think it worked really well. Like I said, the whole thing with Martessa was great. And yeah, I think he did great. Didn't focus too much on him him because he had primacy empire last season but yeah i think jay was great and then moving on from jay we go to lloyd and yeah thankfully he didn't have too much focus the only real standout moment he had was with the dragon when he's holding the shield and then that's basically all he did this season he he did a bit of fighting like i said with zane in that scene but he didn't do too much which is personally and well i know it's not just personally i know quite a lot of people have heard as i said in other reviews yeah lots of people do agree that it's good that lloyd's finally just having a backseat because the thing is he's a great character but then he comes way too much he had like basically the first two seasons then he had a quite a bit of season four then season five season six finally he took a bit of a backseat then season seven he took one season 8 was all about him season 9 it was about him season 10 it was about him and then it got to this point it's like Lloyd isn't the main character the main character is all of them arguably you could say technically is Kai because he was the first one but no really if there only was it would be Lloyd but it's good that they only mainly focus on him well not all this season so it's good just to see him be a supporting character but still stay in his traits so Lloyd was great this season in season 10, we knew there was quite a big gap between there and 11. It has to be at least a few months to a year, as I've heard people speculate. But then season 11 and 12, well, took back place back to back pretty soon. And then season 13, because you have quite a lot of the characters, so, like mainly Lloyd and Nia, saying that um, they're literally just like stuck in the Never Realm. They'd, well, take down a spear, are stuck in the Never Realm, then stuck in Prime Emperor and have been gone for a few weeks. So that really kind of speculates it. I would say it all happened within three months. So that's really cool. But yeah, basically what happens is with Wu, guys, he feels like the ninja don't need him as we've not really seen him much. He's kind of just been on the sideline and he just didn't want to do anything. And he kind of wanted to sort of give up being the master Wu that we all know. But then a mystic and like, well, not mysterious, another character comes in being Misako, which is great to see her back for literally one episode since season 10. But still, she was back and she basically um, has a go at him and says, you cannot be doing this. And then they basically force him to go to Shintaro, which is really good so we kind of then get to see more of Wu and then there's also some great dynamic with him and Cole which I will um, um I will say about when we well now when we get to Cole Guys, my apologies just before I speak about Cole. The Postman did return, which is great to see him with his, like, sort of comedy that he always has to go up these flight of stairs. And, yeah, it's great to see him and hear a bit more about him, which I think he's one of those side characters that he just needs... He really should make more appearances because he's such, a, like, an, like, an old character. He's been in since the beginning, so he's, like, it's really good. And I really hope you get a new minifigure for him. That would be really cool because I think his design slightly changed. But, yeah, that was awesome. 
So then finally, the start of the season, the breakout character is Cole. He finally gets his own season after technically Day of the Departed, which I think was great, but I know not many people thought it was great. But yeah, so it begins, it starts off with him and the chicken from season 11, which is really weird, playing the Prime Empire game, which Prime Empire had actually been done by Milton Dime and Unagami Unadventure Game 1, which is really cool that they actually finished Prime Empire. So then that was kind of how we got introduced to Cole this season. It mainly begins for Cole when he's basically in his bedroom trying to sleep and Glek comes for Gilly's help and then he finds out that Gilly, well, the Elemental Master of, well, he thought he got he got the wrong person because he knows the Elemental Master of there should be there, but Gilly isn't there, which we will, I'll talk more about Gilly later or Millie or Lily. And basically, Cole is kind of going on a discovery, so he then, um, well, of Princess Vanya overhears, and then she agrees that, well, she thought she had an imaginary friend, which turns out it was actually one of the geckles, I believe, and what then kind of happens, they go off exploring into the mines, because she, and then it's quite funny, she has her torch, and she's like, there, she's ready for an adventure, and then when they get down there, they see the skull sorcerer, and Cole being Cole, he puts up, he put, he, wants none of that he sees the skull sorcerer like enslaving the um the geckles and the months which he doesn't know at the time who they are but anyway as he's a ninja and he's a selfless selfless person he then attempts to save them all which it kind of backfires as the skull sorcerer is something new he's like klaus but that can fly so that basically he then gets defeated by the awakened warriors which then yeah they pretty much take him down really easy and then the next episode being the worst rescue ever which is episode four i believe yeah that's it he basically then gets rescued and then it kind of goes through when they try and escape in i think it's the one after episode five i believe that's it yeah because episode six was end of the, no queen of the five was months queen of the months i think but anyway what happens is is basically the ninja gets separated and cole ends up getting separated on his own then i think then in episode seven when we see him again he's getting attacked by the spider and then princess vanya saves him they go up to the surface and basically um um, um what was his name quickly looking King Evangelis, that's it. Um, I can't even find it, but uh, oh, there it is. King Evangelis then reveals that, oh, hey, I'm the school source. And then Cole's like, no, falls down a trap door. And basically, he ends up meeting the lonely, or now known as the upling. And basically, he befriends them. And he goes on, well, he starts learning more about his powers as he's never been so deep in the ground as, like, um, as Wu said, he's never been so low into the earth. Therefore, his powers are stronger. And he can basically tap into his RX, which I don't really understand how. Because I thought the RX was... So he only unlocked that after his ghost powers. Was that like when his power hits a certain level and he's human, possibly? That's, that didn't really explain that well. But well, that's like one of the only minor little things that happen. But then basically he starts like using his powers, and then when he like punches the um, floor with his arms, it with his RX, it then starts doing a trail which he leads. They go under a tunnel. Then it eventually leads them to, I believe it was a one with the mine track, and then at the end they eventually get led to the Temple of Earth which is actually like a proper uh, um, temple for the elemental master of earth. And then he sees a statue of his mum, Lily. And then he kind of gets to see this mech that's activated by his um, raw um, elemental RX powers, which then he also learns about the spin jitsu burst. And that is, yes, that is what they're called. But basically an ultimate form of earth that, all, well, we potentially, maybe all the ninja can do. And basically what he does, he then tries to learn it, he can't. And then he kind of like, we have flashbacks with his mum, which, wow, I'll talk about the end. They were pretty emotional, I've got to admit. It was, it was great the way they did it, it's sad, but like the way they did it, they set up, I mean, it was great. They didn't ruin it or retcon it, which was great to see. Technically, yeah, they technically, I'm not sure if they could have retconned it because they weren't too much on it before. But yeah, it was really good the way they did it. And yeah, and then um, Colt and Vanya, it was great that they didn't try and ship them because like, we already had that with Lloyd and Harumi, and that would have got boring. But they have a really good friendship, as you can say. They get quite close quite quickly, their friendship, which is something at least it kind of changes it up. And then, yeah, then Cole at the end does unlock his Finjitsu burst, which is amazing. And he actually ends up defeating one of the villains. Like, technically, there's two you've got the Skull Hazardur, then you've got um, the Skull Sorcerer, which they he actually kills like. 
um, the uh, mask of ha um, the skull of Hazardur, like, he actually destroys it completely, which I was quite surprised they actually haven't permanently destroyed a villain for ages, which was interesting, it kind of mixes it up, but I, I want to know, what exactly was that skull, was it a person, was it just an ancient artifact, was it just a curse, like, what exactly was that, but yeah, the mask got completely destroyed, and then, yeah, it kind of just showed Cole going through the development of really understanding his true power, which was great to see, and yeah, he was really great, and I, by the way, I'm doing most of this off the top of my brain, so apologies if I stumble on any words, which uh, I have a few times, I believe, and also, if I forget anything, but no, I don't believe so, he basically figures out and then he does the plan to get up, and then he kind of um, helps Vanya kind of get the guards to go on her side, sort of. He goes off and he saves the day by fighting the Skull Saucer, which can I just say, that fight was absolutely amazing. Like, the animation and everything was great, and yeah, I definitely rec like, recommend this season. It is so good. And that, yeah, I think that was absolutely amazing. So Cole was an absolutely breakout character. He's always felt a bit bland in the sense he's never had um, screen time, but thankfully, we've got a season from him really he should have had one within the first 10 at least one so yeah that is how it happened but yeah overall Cole was absolutely amazing and I really like the progression he's made considering like showing how much he's really understanding his powers which is great of the whole burst so yeah that's overall great and it's also another hint sorry thing I forgot to say is that when he was reading he didn't unlock burst immediately which like when when he saw the ninja in danger I thought it would have been one of those oh no your friends are in danger um, you must go and save them but no he then went he then fouled well sort of couldn't help him but then when he eventually did get out there and to the skull saucer and he actually did fight him he actually did unlock it very at the end it only lasted for a short amount of time it was great to see so overall Cole was an absolutely breakout character then Princess Vanya, she was basically the new character, as I've already, like, spoke upon in Cole's section of this video, which, apologies, is, like, six minutes long. Wow, that six minutes went fast. I talk a lot, my apologies. But basically, Princess Vanya, I think she was great this season. Her, like, chemistry of Cole, I like the fact that it was, had just a really close friendship and it weren't anything more, because I feel like that would, like I've said, it would have been way too much like Lloyd and her roomie, which would have been terrible. But then um, hers with Wu, I thought it was quite good. She was quite caring. And, yeah, I liked her character. It was different she basically always wanted to adventure but she was a princess and she didn't well she wanted to just adventure but she liked where she lived and she liked being a princess which is way different to her roomie so it's great to see that she had a pet um dragon called chompy as you can see yeah it was really cool she was really protective of her friends and that and one of the biggest standout moments is basically when her basically uh, yeah skull saucer is her father and there is a well you know um uh, uh, king vangelis that's it basically he then had there's a moment where he says if you go down if like basically he lets down the trap door but it's the up lease so they'll only fall down and Cole and Wu go down and he tells her if if she goes down that he's no longer her daughter and that was such a like, powerful scene it's like wow did he actually go that far and then she looks at him and she just jumps down that hole and it's like oh my day she went for Cole and Wu which shows how much she really cares for people and that she will do the thing that's right and then basically when Cole had to fight him at the end, she weren't she weren't put off. She was helping Cole win. And then in the end, she managed to convince um what was his name? What what is his Gilmar? Sorry, that's it. I was gonna check on my iPad, but no, I've got some notes written, but no, I don't need to. Gilmar, she basically then convinces him and she says, As your future queen. And then I think her story arc it's ended absolutely wonderfully. It is amazing. It basically is ended when she well, it's kind of ended with her coronation. She actually becomes the queen because, well, Van um, Jellis is not stable. He's he's a villain. They can't have him being the king because he's done some bad stuff, as which I will talk about. But yeah, I think Vanya was great. Her bit with Lloyd, I think it was quite good because Lloyd, like at the beginning, he was like, nope. He, he like literally snuck into room Cole's room before Gleck and because Cole originally thought Gleck was Lloyd. And then anyway, he was like, no, Cole, do not trust her. And then Cole's like, seriously, is this about Harumi? Which I think it does drag out, but I think it's kind of, I think it's helped, like, I think that'd be great if that's kind of the close story for him, but yeah, I think that was great what they did with Vanya and Lloyd, and then at the end, like, Lloyd apologised for not trusting her, and I think that was great, and definitely, well, Cole has promised to, well, she, um, they, they made a promise that she will help him, she said she will bring her and the entire, like, battalion, you know, like, the whole, she said she'll bring the whole, um, um, army of Shintaro, which is so great, and yeah, I think that they had a great ending, and yeah, overall, Vanya, 
Another great character like Akita, better in my opinion personally, and she. I really hope she does appear. Like I think, well, they're going to do water chapter, then end with um, energy Lloyd, which I've heard lots of people say, and I reckon it's going to be amazing. It's going to be like an end game kind of level. I think Clutch Powers would return for it. Then I think Akita and her brother, which I keep forgetting her brother's name, and then I think uh, who else? I think maybe Racer Seven and Akino would return, and then it would potentially end with Vanya returning. But yeah, I think that is amazing. So overall, she's a great and welcome new character to the character to the cast of Ninjago into the overall character roster. And quickly, just going to say a bit more about Chompy. I thought Chompy was a good character. It's actually Master Wu's um, Battle Dragon, which is really funny to see. And it's well, it's not really explaining what type of dragon, but I guess it's a Shintaro kind of exclusive because it can kind of just grow like larger into an adult than back to a baby, which is really funny because it can go from being this like cute little menacing dragon to it's absolutely like terrifying dragon for like the perspective of the characters, which is really good. And I remember Vanya, she was like, like what is going on? Because I remember it happened when she was like, like helping like untie Cole when he got like an issue with the spider. And then she was like, and then he was like, what is going on? She was like, what do you mean? Like, so that was really cool. But yeah, overall, I think that was a... Chomp, it was a great character. Seeing Wu um, ride on its back was really cool. Like, as you can see, it's chasing the Skull Saucer Dragon. And overall, yeah, I think Chompy is another pretty good character. So yeah, that was great. And now, King Vangelis, a.k.a. Um, Princess Vanya's father. I think he was a really good character. Like, at the beginning, you go into the season, you think he's, like, he's a really nice person, really, like, he want, he's, like, like, you know, got a warm welcome in for the ninja. And, yeah, I thought he was, like, a really good character. If it weren't for that spoiler, which I really wish they hadn't said who his identity was, um, it would have been so unexpected. Especially the moment when he, tell, when he tells when he tells Vanya that she is no longer his daughter if, he, if she betrays him, even though he's betrayed her. That was such a far moment. And he, it wasn't that the, the um, skull of Hazardur, it wasn't controlling him it was just evil and it was just too evil together and it showed how evil he was and we've not had a villain like that who's just purely evil for literally no reason and has literally no motives like that was quite a twist in my opinion like if they had like i said if we hadn't have known the identity before that would have been a wow oh my days that is like a shocking moment it would have been but yeah i think it was really great it's like we didn't see too much of him prior but yeah it's and also an interesting part benstone had no one spoken about this right i've been wanting to say this for a while but benstone it, it connects that story we've heard about benstone but we've like i've kind of always wondered where does it come from but this season explains where the Venge Stone comes from, which is really awesome. So yeah, King Vangelis is a great character, and I will talk about his alter ego very soon. And then we have Halmar, guys, who doesn't really do much. He's just the king slash queen's now um, right hand man. He kind of just um, does like controls the army. And yeah, he's a pretty cool character. I like the fact. I guess the good shining moment for him is when like does he betray his king and go for his potential queen? Because he has to kind of because. In that situation, a king can't just, a queen can't, uh, well, a princess or, or prince can't just be like, oh, um, the king, queen, she's corrupt, he's corrupt, um, can, uh, I need to take power. Like, for, like, that kind of showed that he made his own decision, which actually, thinking of it, does show he does have some character in, and some independence. So they have written him pretty well in the very minimal time he had. So, yeah, I think Hal Miles is a good character. And the other king and queen, yeah, they were cool. And you do see a old couple as well from um, Shintaro. They're, like, the only... Uh, um, I'm pretty sure they're only like the progest the only pedestrians you see, the only like public other people who aren't guards. So, yeah, pretty awesome. Then moving on to the months, which were the green creatures, I believe, um, as um, they, as I think Kai and Zane referred to them. So yeah, I think the months were really cool characters. Queen, then yeah, Queen Mertessa, who was the one who was after Jen. I've already spoken about that, how funny it was. As you can see, some of them had no studs on their head, which no, that just looks wrong. You can't have a no, that just no. That just defeats the whole purpose of a Lego minifigure. But yeah, I think the months were really cool characters. I like the fact that they, I believe they had the, the, the ivory, uh, the ivory blade the sh the shadow ivory blade of deliverance i believe is what they had and yeah i think that was really cool yeah i think those great characters and yeah i like their little place which i'll go over that at the end uh, um that like whole area where they lived and yeah with like little rope bridges at the top and stuff and yeah i thought those really cool characters and i really hope they do return because i think they actually were genuinely really good characters like side characters
And then we have the Geckles, who I think are really good characters as well. And yeah, I think the Geckles were really cool. They were more the civilized version, um, like creatures, I would say, out of the two. And yeah, I think they were really funny characters. Definitely the whole slug racing thing was actually just hilarious. Like, that is no way to do it. And they had their whole parliament system. Then they had their Mino, then they had the whole um, Mino, the uh, Mino creature like that to fight it. But then. Then, then, of course, Kai and Zane did it, even though, like I said, I may have said before, I can't remember if I have or haven't, but then, like, Zane did more of the heavy lifting, more of the hard work, but then Kai got elected Chancellor, and then, like I said, the whole throwing stones thing is just hilarious, because it, it's just something you wouldn't expect to be funny, but just, like, just imagining them doing it in, like, a court this day and age, it's just obviously that you, that wouldn't happen to us, what makes it comedic, and yeah, I thought that's really cool, and what was his name, Gulch? Let me double check that. Yes, I was right. Sorry, it is Gulch. And yes, Mertessa and him, I thought their react, they're like, I thought their chemistry was quite good in the sense of like when they actually put everything aside, it was actually like come pretty good friends. I thought that was actually really good that they kind of resolved it on their own and they actually, I think they come friends. It'd be really good to see them like working in like perfect harmony in like late seasons. I think mean, that would be great. Like I said, that end game kind of thing for potentially season that would be 15. So yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. And then the minor creature I thought was an interesting creature. Of course, it didn't exactly have too much screen time, but I thought it was really cool. And the whole trial by um, uh, Mino, I thought it was a bit too short and rushed, but I still thought it was a pretty good one. That's episode six, I believe. And yeah, I thought the Mino creature was pretty awesome. Um, definitely um, still really good. Still like the set of it. It's not actually Zane's Mino creature. Like, Zane frees it. It should be called, like, freeing Mino creature on oh, my days. That would be such a good um, little hint back to freeing Dobby set, which was one of my early sets i believe but yeah that's really awesome and then the dire battle i also thought was pretty cool but it's kind of just your generic run of the mill like battle but i still thought the uh, idea of the dire battle was pretty awesome and then the Awakened Warriors, I thought that they were really cool. I like the fact that how the ninja was saying, oh, they're so easy to def get be to be defeated. And then they easily get, like, back up again, which is just funny. How, yeah, I just thought it was really cool how easy they get taken down, but then they can get up so easy because they're kind of, like, skeletons that have got, like, enhanced by the magic so they can't, like, get defeated. They just keep getting up again and rebuilding themselves, which is really cool. So, yeah, I thought the Awakened Warriors were really good. Not the, of course, I, mm, I don't know. Actually, that's not a, yeah not the best like villain army but still pretty great in my opinion then we have king Ven vangelis aka the skull sorcerer and wow can i just say i think that he was a great character as i was talking about king vangelis and i'm kind of doing as alter ego like clark kent superman kind of thing yeah i thought it was great definitely i think the thing that made him is such a good villain is like i said he's com com just completely purely evil and his design looks amazing the wings the mask kind of reminds me of a plague doctor's kind of mask and then yeah it was just so cool then he had the um skull of hazardur I believe is what its name was. And yeah, overall, I think it was just really cool. Just the way he was just so menacing. Like the voice. Oh, wow. That. It just sounded so many things. Menacing, sorry. And something so different. And yeah, um, I just thought he was really awesome. Like definitely an amazing villain. Like not the best villain, but definitely up there. Like I'm going to say he's definitely up there. Then that fight with Cole at the end. Wow. That was absolutely amazing. Which I'm going to talk about that more shortly. But then let's. Um, yep. Yeah, so that was pretty awesome. Then the skull of Hazard. I thought that was really cool. And the fact it was potentially its own villain. And I think I've read some places that, that may be the skull of the previous sorcerer, which I'm not too sure on that. But yeah, that was pretty cool. And the interesting fact, it actually got defeated at the end of the season, which like destroyed, which was very interesting to see. And then it kind of let everything go. And that's like, you know, he lost his powers, which um, Vangelis did. But yeah, overall, I think it was an amazing villain. And I definitely would think it'd be pretty cool to see him return because he's got a good chance. So that would be awesome. But maybe like with the uh, power of um Klaus so that, that maybe he could put his own like his own like evil um what is it evil like team together that could be really awesome then guys we have the new trio aka the lonely or now the upley so we have the three members being Corgran, which is from metalonia which is the same as Karloff, which is really cool to see and he had the axe which he kept talking to and he was convinced that everyone could hear it. Then second off, we have Plundar with the thief and Adam, the spider, which I thought is really cool. The fact Adam, like, well, is good. And then Plundar, I like the idea of the dice. That was really cool, tie into the set. And then finally, we have, what was his name? Fungus. Yes, that was really cool, but 
What? What is that elemental power? Is it? Is he magic? He used ice. He didn't use anything else. He got fireworks in that hat. Is it a magic hat? Like, we need to get more on these characters. And something that I used to under name Bricks by Mine, he said something which I thought was really interesting. If they did a figure pack, so then you'd get, you'd get, um, Corgrun, Fung, um, no, yeah, that's it, Corgrun, Fungus, and then you would get Plundar in, and then the buildable Adam in those minifigure packs, which I think, yeah, I think that would work really well. So fingers crossed we will get one of them. Sadly, we have been missing some of the main character figures. But yeah, I thought this trio were really cool. And um, as, yeah, as I've said, I think as I might have said this before. But yeah, as um, Jay said, or was it Kai? What, I think Jay. Yeah, Cole's got his own crew, which, yeah, I thought it was really good. And at the end, like, they said that the, the, the Upley will be there for him. And I really like that friendship because they've only known each other for a while. And I can see a really good team there. So that was really awesome. I really enjoyed the Upley. I'm a bit sad that we didn't get more, well, actual minifigures them and more screen time. Overall, I think the Upley were great characters. And I can't wait to see them return because they need to. They're great characters. Like, we just need, like, a like an all-end game, like, the all, like an all-end game, all the stars like just big moment like every character like ronan where was he in season 10 like i saw him at the back at the end and i was i was googling it and then season nine i was like oh yeah of course he's in it and then i realized he wasn't and i'm like why didn't i realize that he should have been but yeah that's really awesome then we have Griefbringer, who I thought was an absolutely amazing. The dragon design just works off so well. And then especially like the green, I think the green worked really well. And it was, so I believe Lily, uh, Gilly, or Millie, depends if you're a Munts or a Gekko. Um, basically, you got that AKA Cole's mother, which I'll get to in a minute. She basically defeated the dragon and restored peace. And then obviously when the Skull Sorcerer rise, or uh, yeah, rise, technically maybe the second Skull Sorcerer, the second, but we're not really sure on that, uh, implied by a sticker and the fact that someone must have put it down there but yeah it was really awesome and definitely it's good to see it back i like that in the middle of it you can see it's like rib cage and you can see it's got this um what do you call it like it's energy source like the set which is really awesome yeah and then that leads us into final battle between cole and the skull saucer which can i just say that was an absolutely amazing fight the whole thing because it was a two-part episode 14 and 16 the upperly strike back and the son of lily i thought that's so good like a scene in particular i, I can't get a photo because it just looks blurry but there's a scene where it's like going from near and then there's like a fight and then it like jay like swoops in and then like zooms into him it was so good but yeah the whole fight between cole and the saucer was amazing especially when he ends up using the burst as you can see here to destroy the skull on Hazardu, which that was amazing. And oh my, the whole thing about the Spinjitsu burst was amazing. And then, yes, the Spinjitsu burst was absolutely amazing. The way they did it, the animation of Cole, as you just saw, was amazing. Then the whole, like, of him, like, harnessing his true elemental power and it turning into this massive tornado was amazing. And then him destroying the um, skull hazard at the end, it, therefore de um, depowering um, King Vangelis and making him human again. Wow, that was amazing seriously that i think this, the burst was really cool i hope we get to see it with the other ninja i hope yeah great idea and it's good to see the little pods actually accurate again like they actually kind of make sense the minifigure design not so much but the actual figure like the actual context of them yeah they canon like I said, aka Gilly or Millie or Lily, aka Cole's mother. The whole backstory I think was great. We learned in believe episode three, I believe. Um, sorry if I got it wrong, but I think it's the worst rescue ever. Where it basically tells that the elemental our master of Earth, she was in Shintaro, and she took down Griefbringer like permanently until he got uh, re is resurrected. And yeah, I thought that was great. The animation was great, and then as you can see on the left, the Gekko's got the ivory bladed deliverance, and on the right hand side, the shadow uh, the the shadow ivory blade of deliverance went to the geckles which i think that's really awesome and an interesting fact the fact that they actually didn't have any power they were just like weapons like no more that was a great thing it was like oh no we don't really need more powerful magical weapons but yeah that was great then a part that i've really been wanting to talk about is what happened to cole's mom aka gilly if you're a gecko millie if you're a month and for the rest of us um lily oh my days wow that was such a good scene it was heartbreaking to find out what had happened it's good that they didn't like because it was like the kind of near parents they brought them back and it kind of ruined the whole like the whole element of it it didn't really make sense but here they didn't ruin the scene it it was like revealed that sadly that they did pass she did pass away 
prior to the pilot and it seems from natural causes which is like more realistic which just adds makes it even more heartbreaking and overall finding out what happens to Cole Mum was heartbreaking and the scene where she says like you know you'd stick up for people who can't which is kind of a reference to the line that says um isn't that Zane says protect those who cannot protect themselves that's such a good scene like honestly watching that scene is like oh my days like it is really heart touching just seeing just like the scene and Lou it was great to see Lou he didn't say anything originally I was like it's disappointing he didn't but that actually can that speaks that silence can speak thousand volumes as they say thousand words but that kind of shows that shows his like how upset he was and it's great to see that but it's just great to see how they did it they did this scene so well it could have gone so wrong it could have ruined it but after like 13 seasons they have perfectly explained to what is going on so yes that is really awesome wow such a heart-touching scene like seriously great scene and then finally, the, the location, we have the Monastery of Spinjitsu, which is awesome to see at back, a bit of a mess, but obviously that's because they've been away a lot. Then we have Shintaro, which I thought was an absolutely amazing thing. As you can see, I overall, I just thought it looked really awesome, The like the whole town of it. And then we also have the um, like the dungeon, the skull sort of dungeon with the skull, looked amazing. And then another cool thing is that the feature on the set with the love doors, it does over open and overall, I think Shintaro is an amazing place and I hope we get to return it next season or sometime soon that's really it guys this video is 36 minutes long currently wow i'm so sorry so if anyone else has got this far thank you so much please comment the word i don't know shintaro if you've got this far that is absolutely amazing if you have thank you and yeah overall i think it is such a great season i can't wait to see what happens with the upley um see what happens with um well uh queen vanya when she got um coronated i think it's going to be amazing i really hope she does come and help the ninja out at some point the whole like this scene here with lloyd um set, forgiving her like for not trusting her i think was amazing and then colt and vanya's like goodbye i think that was really good because then it, it, it looked like it's gonna tease and it's about oh, are they gonna are, are they gonna like is, is something gonna happen here and then no it was like a simple goodbye because like the last time that happened with lloyd and nikita she kissed him and then we were all the fans were like what where did that come from but yeah overall i think it was really well played and and then in the final shot um they do say um look boy says let's not go home yet let's go for another journey so i think it may literally just directly continue which would be cool oh, hmm, what could be an interesting thing maybe they like or maybe it only starts off like near and like she's in the ocean or something but yeah overall i think this is an amazing season so thank you guys for watching this video um, apologies if you've watched this whole video. It, you have mo like my voice. I know I get loud and quiet. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I think this is an absolutely amazing season. Season thirteen in my top five. Love the season. Can't wait for more. Brilliant season. I'm keep. I've I've said so many um good like adjectives about how much I like this season. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Until tomorrow's video. Bye for now.